So, hi everyone, my name is Simone. And uh, before I begin talking, I would like to start by thanking the TEDx Ashbury College Committee for this opportunity. So, this year the theme for TEDx was Mind the Gap. If any of you have ever ridden on uh, the London Tube, you probably would have noticed large signs and announcements saying Mind the Gap. The purpose of this is so that people don't trip and fall over the gap between the platform and the train. But today, I will be talking about a much more substantial and prevalent gap than that, one, of, one that affects people all over the world. This is the gap between people of different genders and the resulting gender inequality. Though society has progressed much in the past few years, there's still gender inequality to be seen all over the place. This can mean things as major as the gender wage gap, the pink tax, and uh, the education gap, or even in something as seemingly simple as the fact that women's clothes tend not to have pockets. So now let's take a closer look at one of the main aspects from which gender inequality can be seen today, the gender wage gap. So what is the gender wage gap? The gender wage gap is, ga is the gap in pay that people of different genders receive for doing the same work. On average in Canada, a woman makes 89 cents for every dollar that a man makes. And this gap can be seen to be even greater for women of color, as you can see from this statistic. So, uh, according to the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, Canada has the eighth highest gender pay gap out of 43 countries. The gender pay gap is a definite indicator of inequality that women face in the economic world. So what is being done to solve this problem? Well, two months ago, a law came into effect in Canada called the Pay Equity Act. This ensures that people of different genders get the same pay for doing the same work. Though this is a very important step being taken to solve this problem, the gender pay gap is only at the surface of gender inequality, and there's so many other factors that need to be taken into consideration. An example of one of these is the pink tax. The pink tax is an upcharge on women's products, even if they take the exact same amount of time and money to manufacture. Uh, so on average, a woman pays $1,350 more every year for the same products, with uh, personal care products costing 13 more, 8% more for adult clothing, and 7% more for toys and accessories. You can even see a real life example of a store here where the exact same pill costs a dollar more, just for its pink packaging. So, you may be wondering why this pink tax exists. Well, simply put, there is no reason. It's just product discrimination, and there are higher import tariffs on women's products. So, what can you do to help fight the pink tax? Well, if you see a discrepancy between the prices of men's and women's products, you can shop a different brand. You can always try to buy more gender neutral items and price compare. You can even support brands uh, that have gender neutral pricing. So as I mentioned before, the pink tax is no literal tax. It's just higher pricing. But you know what is a literal tax? The tax on women's sanitary products. In Florida, marshmallows are tax exempt. In California, it's cooking wine, Maine snowmobiles. Women's sanitary products are a basic need. And if we don't have to pay tax on marshmallows, I don't see why it's so unreasonable that women's sanitary products shouldn't be tax exempt too. So I've talked about inequality that women face in the economic world, but what about in the world of education and in the workplace? Generally speaking, the global literacy rate for adult women is 8% less than that of men. And according to UNICEF, 129 million girls are out of, world, uh, are out of school worldwide. With this number, less than half of the world has uh, achieved gender equality when it comes to primary education. An example of this is how in Afghanistan, 60% of the, of the kids who are out of school are female. Some things that prevent uh, girls from getting an education, especially in developing countries and countries facing poverty, include things like poverty, child marriage, and just sexism. Poor families will often choose to invest in the education of a boy over that of a girl. And don't make the mistake of assuming this only happens in countries facing poverty. The United States of America, a country considered developed with amazing technology and the best military in the world, has never had a female president. 
This brings me to problems that women face in the workplace, especially in male-dominated careers. So a male-dominated career is any career that comprises of 25% or less women. Um, so examples of these include uh, things like financial analysts, farmers, software developers, aerospace engineers, firefighters, pilots, and orthopedic surgeons. According to a Cornell University study, women in male-dominated careers such as these face problems like lack of support, feeling incompetent, mistreatment, and lack of a voice. Women face a lot of inequality in the workplace. That is to say, if they're even given an opportunity to, the, uh, to an education in the first place. But what about socially? Women are expected to fit into a certain criteria in their social lives. One that, when you think about it, is incredibly sexist. There's even discrimination to be seen in something as simple as clothing. A man's professional clothes consist of a, a cotton button-up shirt, a comfy suit jacket and pants, and comfy flats. Meanwhile, women are expected to wear tighter clothes, and most professional and fancy women's clothes are made up of synthetic fibers, even though they've been proven to be bad for skin. Women are also uh, sometimes expected to wear heels, despite the fact that they hurt. In fact, it's so bad that women in Tokyo, where in most places it's, it's mandatory to wear heels to work, are, are protesting the uncomfortable footwear. And it's not even just in clothing. On average, in families where both partners are working and earning wage, the woman does twice as much housework and childcare. This is something that, like all forms of inequality, needs to change. Women have the right to feel comfortable in their position in society. And this can start by something as simple as wearing more comfortable clothing. So for this entire talk, I've spoken a lot about women and the inequality that women face as compared to men. But what about people who don't identify as male or female? Uh, there are so many other genders on the spectrum, including gender fluid, uh, gender queer, non-binary, omnigender, bigender, two-spirit, and so many more. So what about the discrimination that they face? According to the National Transgender Survey, people who identify as non-binary feel that they face discrimination not only in their workplace, but in their social lives. And most and almost all non-binary people feel this way. Not only this, but people, members of the LGBTQ2IA plus community face discrimination in healthcare. Someone who is LGBTQ is three times more likely to have a healthcare provider with other LGBTQ patients, and is also three times more likely to go out of their way to drive over an hour to see a healthcare provider specifically for LGBTQ patients. People who don't identify as male or female face a lot of discrimination as well, and it's important to acknowledge this and keep it in mind when thinking about gender inequality. Human rights are something that everyone should have, simply because we are all human, if not for any other reason. And though they may not be listed on every human's right list, having fairness, equality, and respect are basic human needs. So why should people be deprived of them because of their gender? It simply doesn't make sense. Gender inequality is something that is far more discreet in the modern world. And on first glance, it doesn't even seem to be there. But it definitely is. Gender equality, on the other hand, is something that will help everyone in the long run. And I hope that my speech has inspired every single one of you to fight for these rights in order to progress as a human species. Thank you for listening, and I hope you all have a great evening. Thank you.